welcome back to my channel i, I said, said hey hey welcome back to my channel hey y'all Hey y'all, I'm Jasmine W. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I know what you're thinking, Jasmine, why didn't you sing the, sing the theme song? It's because my baby's sleep and every time I sing that my theme song, they be up, honey. They be looking like, is it time to go? No, it's time to go to sleep, honey. Okay. So um, I don't want to take no risks, <laughs> no chances. Um, I got some hair in my eye. Anyway, welcome back to my channel. If y'all have seen my videos before and you have not subscribed to my channel at this point, I just want to let you know you a hater and you don't support black women, especially during Black History Month, and you ought to be ashamed, okay? But if you are subscribed, uh, welcome back. Um, <laughs> y'all know I like to jump right into it, but first I must uh, tell you about a black owned business. Um, these hats, um, well, this hat is made by RK Collection. Uh, I'm going to tag their Instagram down below. She's made me a couple of hats. She's actually even made me and my baby matching frog hats. And I just love these hats so much. I just wear them when I'm running errands in LA and I just get so many compliments on them. So check out, um, RK Collection hats here. Um, the one that I'm wearing. And I just think it's so cute to get one for you and your baby, matching one you and your baby. Um, highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so let's get into Married at First Sight. Y'all know on my channel, we always start with the most boring, boring couple. couple. So I think this episode, we're going to, all of them were pretty boring, except for Jasmine and, and, and Eris, which is gonna be last, by the way, okay? So let's start with Chris and Nicole. not in love yet she said are you in love with me and he was like not yet yeah baby it's been two days calm down um anyway she said um you don't even love you and it's been 30 some years chris and nicole were on the beach in jamaica taking shots and chris was like damn because she was taking those uh shots baby like the rock okay the whole and she was okay she was throwing them back honey if i back it up is it fast enough? Watch me throw it, throw it back. It back, it back, it back. That's how she was throwing back them shots, honey. She was not playing. Um, then she started to open up and talk about the old Nicole. Or to her when she drunk. She said the old Nicole would drink a lot. The old Nicole, this reminds her of the old Nicole, which would drink a lot, honey which would, I guess, take out what was a very selfish person. I said, oh, so old Nicole was an alcoholic. Damn near, that's what it sounds like. An alcoholic, a bad person. I'm a good person. Honey, I don't. I don't know either. And Chris was like, excuse me, what? <laughs> he was like, I'm going to let you know right now, baby. I'm not going to tolerate it. Okay, I'm not going to tolerate you talking to me crazy. I'm not going to tolerate you doing me dirty. I'm not going to tolerate you being selfish. And good for him. But, baby, when she started talking about old Nicole, I'm like... Red flags everywhere, honey. It was a, it was a, a speed track. Why is she bringing this up right now? Like, why is she telling him how she used to be a bad person in her own opinion? I don't know, honey. I There's something off about Nicole, and we just haven't gotten to it yet, but there's just something off about her and maybe there's something that used to be off about her but now she's healed i don't know in the name of jesus anyway uh, <laughs> um chris told nicole that she looks so beautiful she's the most beautiful wife in jamaica the most beautiful wife at dinner i know he didn't mean it to be shady but i want i want my man to tell me i'm the most beautiful wife period now i'm the most beautiful wife in la Baby, you mean worldwide. Okay. Okay, we talk about candy birds, honey. We talk about worldwide. <laughs> honey, I better not be the most beautiful wife in Jamaica, honey. I better be the most beautiful wife. Exactly. Anyway, Chris said that he wants to have kids. Ideally, he would like to have three kids. Not three kids, but three. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a lot. Um, and Nicole said, and keep in mind, Chris is 36 and Nicole is 32. And, and Nicole said that she's never really wanted to have kids. Um, she's not dying to have kids, but she's open to it. Now, I was looking on Twitter, and I kind of agreed with what everybody had to say on Twitter. Everybody was like, married at first sight, this is a miss. You do not pair people 
who definitely want kids with people who are not sure if they want kids. You have to both be on the same page about wanting kids. And they do this every season. They did it with, um, Noi. I don't know. I think it was two seasons ago. There was an Asian couple on there and the girl was lying. It was Steve and, Noi. and um, I forget her name, but they, she wanted kids so bad. And he was like, oh, you know, maybe one. And she had to have five or whatever. Like, kids needs to be something that you guys are on the same page with. This is not something that you can decide later. If you're 32 and you're still on the fence about whether you want to have kids, don't have them. Exactly. Just don't, you know? Um, and Chris is sure that he wants three kids. So I don't understand why they even match these two together, to be honest. I wrote down Nicole does not want kids and yeah, I stand by that. I don't think she wants kids. Chris does. It's not going to be a match. Plus the old Nicole baby. Do people really change? No. Stop the video right now and let me know. Comment and tell me if you think people change. I personally don't think people change, especially not when they get 32 and 36 years old. This is who they are. Okay. Anyway, let's move on to the next couple. Let's move on to Joanna and Chip, AKA Clint and I forget Joanna Hill. I don't know. Anyway, it's Joanna. Um, I wrote down why is Joanna and Chip lost and nobody else is lost. Everybody else enjoying themselves on the beach, but y'all in a van trying to get around. On the after show, they said that they got they lost their luggage and their flight was delayed and all this stuff, but nobody else seemed to have a problem. I don't know why everybody wasn't on the same flight. Maybe it was scheduling. I don't know, but. They were having a rough time and they decided to stop at some waterfalls or whatever. Um, yeah, they were pretty chill about it. I don't remember what Chip was saying, but he kept talking about death. He kept talking about if he die or when he die or something like that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't want to be around nobody who's talking about death every five seconds. He negative. <laughs> Child, my daddy, go, my daddy be doing that. He be like, when I'm gone, I might die tomorrow. I might die next week. And I'll be like, I baby, I wish we would just hurry up then if you if you want it that bad, honey. Okay. Just... <laughs> Child, anyway. Um, Move on, girl. I wrote down, what kind of journey are they on? I'm just, this is what I was trying to figure out. I was confused. Um, I wrote down, Joanna looks good in her swimsuit. However, I don't think... Uh, Chip thought that she looked good because he gonna talk about in the next episode how he like slender women He likes thin model-esque women, baby. I know you're not talking. Okay. Um Anyway okay. um, Let me just touch on that really quick, too I think that and my mom said this and she made a good point that Clint said this about her because she told him that she didn't like gingers. She said, I don't like gingers. I'm not attracted to gingers. I'm not attracted to redheads. I don't know why she would say that to him. To me, I think it's rude. I think it's tell somebody, like, imagine being paired, me being paired with a white guy. And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't really like black women. Right. Like, you don't like something that genetically I can't change. You don't like the fact that I'm a redhead. I think that that is ridiculous. Like that is who I am. I can't change it and I'm not changing it for you. So you should have just told, you should have just said no at the altar. And I also do not understand how a white person, right? Or any person really, because anybody can be a redhead. Right. But I really don't understand how a white person can say, I don't like gingers out loud because your kid can easily be a ginger. You do not have to ha be a redhead of yourself to have a redhead child. We all know this. Facts. So to speak out of your mouth and say, I don't like redheads, I don't like them or whatever. They like, you know, you don't think they're good looking or you don't think they're cute. And then that could easily backfire on you because 10 years from now, well not 10 years, cause she already up there, but you know, five years from now she could get with somebody who's not on the show and have a redhead child and then now this is left on tv and she got to go talk to give them a pep talk about how they are a cute little little baby her own baby i think it's ridiculous and i think it's stupid okay there are plenty of redhead people who are attractive out here um i bet you wouldn't be saying that if if, if the prince was coming your way okay i bet you like a redhead then yeah exactly i think it's just i just it's, i think it's dumb Okay, I think it's irresponsible. But anyway, um, 
Joanna talked about how in her past relationship, she paid all the bills and the men did not contribute. And Chip said, oh, so you just, you know, made, paid all the bills and stuff like that. And they just sat around and was like, yeah, my girl's killing it. And she was like, yeah, basically. And I was like, ain't that the, what this relationship is going to be? Because what do Chip do? I don't remember. I don't remember him talking about his career at all. Okay. And I'm not saying that he doesn't have a good career. I'm just saying that he might not be passionate about it. He's more passionate about fishing. So somebody who's passionate about the career that they are, you know, the career path they're on, they're probably going to be more successful than somebody who's not passionate about what they're doing. So she might be paying all the bills in this situation, but you know, um, yeah, couldn't be me anyway. Um, Joanna said that she has admiration for Chip, but she's not attracted to him. Admire him for what? What has he done for you to admire him? I ain't seen nothing. Anyway, um, I wrote down there's no chemistry between them. Chip said that he loved pina coladas. I wrote down me too because that's how boring the entire segment was. Um... When Chip and Joanna sat down, he was like, what a nice vacation. And I just wrote down, babe, they got no chat, babe. Like, you guys, you're boring. You got no banter. You know, you got to have some good chat. You got to have good fun chat between you two. You got to have some chemistry. There's no chemistry. There's no banter. Oh, my goodness, honey. Um, Joanna told Chip that she does not feel an overwhelmingly need to kiss him. She don't want to kiss him. She's not attracted to him. Yeah, she said that a few times. Ciao. And um, after she told him she don't like redheads, she said, no redheads or gingers. I wrote down, girl, please. And he wrote down, or, and he said, heard. Which means understood. Which means now I'm putting a wall up against you because you don't even like me like that. You're not attracted to me. You hurt my feelings. I just think, I, I, I don't like it. I think it's so nasty, so rude, and not in a cute way. I just, I don't think she should have, I don't think she should have said it. And then she's going to make a big deal next week when he says that he likes tall, slender, model-esque women, and she ain't that. But at the end of the day, two adults cannot communicate. It probably won't happen. He, he just probably needs to say, you hurt my feelings when you said that. And you know what? I, I, I know that that probably hurt your feelings. And I, I'm sorry. I was retaliating. I wanted to hurt your feelings because what you said about me being redhead, that really hurt me. So I apologize for saying that I, you know, like slender women and you felt offended because you, um, you not Giselle Boo Shin or whoever Tom Brady was uh, married to. Please tell me what y'all think about that. Please tell me what y'all think about that, honey. I got to I gotta know because let's move on to the next couple. Please. Let's move on to McKinley and Dominique. Uh -huh. Mac and Dom. Mac and Dom is what I'm calling them. McDom. McDonald's. Let's just call them McDonald's, okay? Because that's what they name sound like. And it's easier. Sound good to me. Um Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think Dom said that this was her first time out of the country. And I wrote down, of course, you're 25. Yeah. And what else is new? I think you should be out of the country before you get married. I think you should have gone out of the country, at least to Mexico, before you get married, honey. Canada, one of the Something. neighboring countries. You know what I mean? Like... Is giving not enough life experience. Um, I really think that they mac they matched Dom with Mac because he is an immature thirty five year old. Right. I think he's thirty five and she's twenty five, or he's thirty four and she's twenty five. He's immature for his age, and she's just immature because she's twenty five. There was a guy who came up to them on the beach who was helping them, who was serving them, named Stedman. I was like, is Stedman a Jamaican name? Is it? Because now I see why Oprah been with him for so long. <laughs> so let me find out Stedman, Jamaican. Anyway, I wrote down um, there is no physical chemistry between McDonald's at all. None. None. Mm -mm. She said that he's closed-minded. I don't know what made her say that, but she said he's closed-minded. I don't know. We don't know what. We don't have the context behind that. But if you look at them on camera... Like, she doesn't think he's funny. He's making these jokes. He's making jokes that white men make in the office. 
Right. He's like, I made this table. <laughs> I made the napkins. <laughs> <laughs> I made the water. <laughs> Just kidding. I walk on water. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> not funny. Except now we're not in the office and we don't have to laugh at, we don't have to laugh at him. We could just stare. Mm -hmm. And instead of not laughing or, or, or just smiling, Dom is going. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why she's doing it. Me either. I don't know why she's making that face the whole time. I, I think it's just her stat. Like that's her normal face that she makes, but it's like, it's the fact that Dom is always smiling shows me that she's been trained to do that. Like she's trained herself to put on a smile no matter what, you know? After um, McKinley got done making his lame jokes, he said, I goof around so much. So goofy, incredibly goofy. Anyway, um, I'm sorry, I should've started with them. This is the most boring couple right here. Um, yeah, literally. And he referenced Dom's boobs. He said, you know, I don't know about the chemistry and being married and all that, but I sure do love her, her breast assistances. <laughs> okay. I, but at the end of the day, they were in the hot tub or in the pool in Jamaica and they seemed to be getting along very nicely. Um, he was pressed up against the breast assist, so maybe he felt in a romantic mood, but they seemed to be having or enjoying each other's company in the pool. Do I think that this is a match? This is this is the worst match on the show this season. I see why Chris and Nicole were matched. I see why Joanna and Chip were matched. I see why the black couples were matched. I do not see why these two were matched. There's no chemistry between them. And Dom is too young for the show. And McKinley, he just seems clueless as well. I mean, this is just like, baby, clueless the movie. Let's move on to the next couple. Oh, I just woke up. Next, we have Kirsten and Shaquille. Kirsten and Shaq. I have to get this off my chest. On the after show, Shaq said that on camera, Kirsten is very affectionate. She wants to touch him. She wants to be close to him and all of that. And off camera, she don't. She's giving him the cold, the cold shoulder. Okay. She being fake for the cameras. That's what Shaq said on the after show, honey. That's he what he said. said. She's being fake for the cameras. And I believe him too, because I don't think he would lie, honestly. Um, and I had to get it off my chest because my first note is that they were all hugged up on the balcony. Okay. Um, then I wrote down, is Shaq going to talk about school 24-7? Sounds like it. I know that's what, I know, I know you giving Chip and Joanna a career or whatever, but are you going to talk about school? He's like, yeah, I'm in class. And, you know, I just hit it from class and I got to go to class. And I was thinking about class and, you know, I'm going to have a class schedule. Okay, we get it, Shaquille. You're, you're, when, you're in education. We get it. But, baby, can we talk about the weather? Can we talk about our favorite color? Can we talk about uh, our favorite position like Eris and, and Jasmine Hill? Anything, Anything but this. <laughs> At this point, especially after I didn't came from the conference, I probably didn't heard about the conference already. And now you talking about some school, baby. Anyway, um, Shaquille told Kirsten that it, it made him feel good for her to be in uh, Alabama um, with him while he was, you know, doing whatever he was doing. And him and Kirsten went to ride ATVs. Now, Shaq said that he, because of his trauma, he was just very careful on the ATVs. He also expanded on the after show that said, you know, he don't think he was being, you know, like a prude on the ATV or anything. He was just being cautious because he's been in an accident before. And so, you know, he said he carries scissors in his car because, you know, you know, you never know if he's going to be in an accident and he just has trauma associated with that. So I hope while he's getting an education, he's also going to therapy because he does need to go to therapy to, um, you know, to try to figure out how he can, uh, push through some of that trauma, but he seems to be doing a good job in my opinion, to be honest. Um, I wrote down that Kirsten, when she got on the ATV and when she got off the ATV and before she got it on it, baby, I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean, to, uh, 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 disrespect her, but she thicker than a snicker, honey. Mm -hmm. She thicker than, she's way thicker than a snicker, honey. She's about two snickers thick. <laughs> okay. 
and I ain't mad at it, honey. A lot of y'all traveling to Dominican Republic, Colombia, Puerto Rico, honey. Y'all traveling down to Mexico to get shapes like that, baby. I ain't even mad. Anyway, um, Shaq told Kirsten that he's attracted to her, that he gets butterflies when he see her, that he said, I still get butterflies when I see you. You know, I'm very attracted to you. That's not something that you have to worry about. That's how he well, sounds. I hope not. Too. It's been two days. Right. Two days. I hope that after two days, you still get butterflies when you see me. Let's see if you still get butterflies after you see me after 10 years. Yeah. I, after 10 years, baby, I get cramps. But anyway. Ooh. At first, Kirsten said, your bald head was an issue. But as we spend time, I'm a little bit more attracted. I think she lying because Shaq already said on the after show that she don't want to touch him or his bald head. But he said here that she be touching his bald head. Which one is it, Shaq? Is she keep her hands off you or she keep your hair hands on the milk dud? That's what I need to know. Anyway. Yeah, because it's giving two different stories right now, milk dud. When Shaq was talking to Kirsten at the dinner table, he was talking to her like she was his one of his mentees. And she said, you know, I want you to talk to me not at me and I was trying to explain to my mom like I knew exactly what she meant she's like I want you to talk to me like Shaq was talking to her as if he was talking to a co-worker you know what I mean like there was still a little level of tact and professionalism and I expect my spouse to get on the phone and talk very professionally but when uh, they get off the phone to be like babe let me tell you what happened like relax just relax. You know what I right. mean? You're not interviewing for me anymore. This is not like the married at first sight prompt process. I know the cameras are watching, but try to talk to your wife like she's your BFF. And she should be, but try to talk to her like that now, even though they don't know each other. So um, I don't know about this couple. I really don't. I can't tell what's happening off camera versus what's happening on camera. They seem to have amazing chemistry but Shaq insinuated that Kirsten is not being real so I just don't know what to I don't know what to make of it let me know what you guys think um and let's move on to the last couple Eris and Jasmine oh lord Eris and Jasmine it's so funny I was at a comedy show this week and I had a guy tell me you know what I heard a um Someone told, told me a long time ago that all Jasmines are fine. And I thought about Jasmine from Married at First Sight. And then I say, well, you know, there are a lot of fine Jasmines, but I do know a couple of ugly ones. Anyway, um, Jasmine and Eris. <laughs> I wrote down, is she going to eat bacon every day? Oh. <laughs> Let me ask y'all something. If you were with somebody who didn't eat meat would you eat bacon every day no and I know a lot of you guys are gonna say I would not change who I am no I would not I'm gonna stay who I am if I want to eat bacon every day he gonna have to accept me eating bacon every day but I put myself in that position like if I did not eat meat and I'm with somebody and I don't care if they eat meat but they were eating bacon every day, I would be like, damn, I can't be with you. Right. Because you're going to sit here and eat bacon every day. Like, I could see if you ate it a few times a week, you know, but you're going to have it for every breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine was like, I've only had it two days in a row. You know, we're on vacation. I don't eat bacon every day. And he was like, oh, all right. But I can already tell that Eris is getting turned off by it. Now, would I say that I would get turned off by it after two times? No. But would I get turned off if I saw my partner? Hell, I like bacon. I love bacon. I know I didn't eat meat for several years, but I do love bacon. It's probably my favorite meat thing to eat. You know what I mean? Like, I can give up everything else, but bacon, I love. But I don't want to see you eat bacon every day. Right. I don't even want to see you eat bacon every day now. Personally. Anyway, um... Eris said that in the past, in his past relationships, the small things have turned him off. And I wrote down bacon. Exactly. Bacon. <laughs> Swine. Oh, but at the end of the day, I don't really care because Eris is trash anyway. I know, I already see how the situation is going to unfold. Jasmine is going to do her best to please him because she grew up with a pastor who's a dad. And she's already programmed 
to do the things that she believes um, she should do in order to make a marriage work and make this situation work. But the reality is, is Eris seems like an asshole to me. So she's going to be putting in a lot of effort for not a lot of results and reward, but she's been mm. programmed to do so. And I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to turn out very good. Anyway. Um, oh, read. Jasmine was talking about how she has been struggling because her mom has been going through chemo and Eris did seem supportive of that. Um, that's a really, really tough situation. Um, so, you know, I'm glad that Jasmine seems to be handling things very well emotionally. You know, she seems very strong and Eris seemed open to supporting her through this at least. Jasmine said that she hopes that this is the beginning of a 30 to 40 year marriage. And she, um, 30, 40 days. Her and Eris were talking about his beard, and she said that, you know, she, don't cut it because, you know, she likes him with the beard. I mean, if you think Eris is good looking, the beard is the only thing. Anyway, let me be quiet, y'all. Um, Eris asked Jasmine over dinner to feed him again. Okay. Let me, I think sometimes, and nobody disagreed with me, but I think sometimes I second guess myself because if a lot of men were to watch my YouTube channel, they would tell me I'm jumping to conclusions. But what I know that I have is a really great read on people and I have great emotional intelligence. The fact that Eris said, feed me grapes, feed me at dinner. The fact that Eris is, um, asking about sex so quickly and the fact that Eris dumps women for very small things and he knows that and the fact that he said uh you eat swine it's giving me misogyny okay it's yep. giving me a man who is very has a lot of internalized misogyny and he wants to see how far he can push jasmine because he's trying to gauge her he's trying to get a scale he's trying to get a read on her right now how much can I push her? How open is she gonna be? How much will she do for me? How much will she tell me? You know what I mean? This is a man who is sizing this woman up and I already know, I, I know the game, baby. And that's what he's doing. He's talking to her about sex. He says, I can be her sex mentor. That's, that's what? You're assuming because she don't wanna talk to you about sex on camera at the dinner table that you need to now mentor her in sex. Baby, I don't, who wants a, who wants somebody to mentor them in sex? That's disgusting to me. That sounds yep. disgusting. It does. Like, it's supposed to be a mutual, enjoyable thing, not something that you play the teacher role and then you teach Jasmine all this stuff. And you're making the assumption, assumption that you need to teach Jasmine something, but just because she doesn't want to openly talk about it on camera doesn't mean that she's inexperienced or needs to be taught. Right. Don't get me started, baby. It's giving misogyny all the way. And ain't nobody gonna be able to tell me no different. Um, he asked her what her favorite sexual position was, and she says, I plead the fifth. And some people on Twitter made a good, um, some good um, comments. I saw one person on Twitter that said, you know, it's fine if you want to get a little risky and frisky with your husband, right? But it's not something that needs to be broadcasted or t spoken about on camera. There are plenty of times where they have conversations off camera. This is not one, something that needs to happen on camera, period. Um, anyway, he asked her her favorite color. She said it was lavender. And he said women who like lavender, their favorite position is the downward facing dog position. Now I am a yogi. I love yoga. I have never heard of the downward facing uh, dog position and in, 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 in when it comes to uh, this context, right? And then Jasmine laughed and said, um, okay. And I do love lavender and he wrong. First of all, Eris, I'm glad that you have confidence when it comes to how you're able to perform in the bedroom, baby, because the, your per personality and your looks aren't given much else. So I'm glad you really have that going for you. You know, I'm glad when people can use sex as a way to get people to, you know, maybe be more interested in them because they want to be curious about what you might bring to the table because, baby, you might not be bringing much else. Period. Mm. Um, anyway. Is given very much whore. Eris said that Jasmine was giving very much lady, and she says, period. Um, I wrote down, Jasmine has a, a, a really great figure as well. All of the women on the show this season have really great figures. I can't say so much for the men. Mm. And um, 
Yeah, Eris said that he's never been in love and he can't imagine that he would fall in love with Jasmine over this short period of time during this experiment when he's never been in love and he's been in relationships that were years long. And I don't imagine him falling in love with anybody, baby, because I don't think Eris loves himself. Me either. Oh, wait, you me. Okay. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um... Yeah, about Eris and Jasmine specifically, honey. Please let me know. And y'all know I've been all up and through the comments um, on uh, all of the videos. So I appreciate your comments. And yeah, if you're still here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, baby, what are we doing and why are we doing it? I don't know. Bye. Bye.